got some timber here and the solar panel tester. Good morning and welcome back to another video here from on top of the house. I'm a bit late this morning. It is Sunday. It is already 9.30. We are a bit late with starting our test, but a bit of shading on this side of the panel here. Sun is just coming around the corner. Okay, I have now used these uh, split cables here to connect our solar panel tester as well as the inverter. Of course, not at the same time, because this wouldn't work, right? We can have only one MPPT controller connected to a single panel. So I will just unplug the micro inverter then when we do our testing and unplug the tester when we are not using it. So at the moment, 51.4 volts. Wow, it's nice and cold here on the roof. So let's see how much we get. These conditions, 166 watts. All right, let's see if a bit of an angle makes a difference. What do we get now? 250. Even a bit steeper angle, 274. Very steep angle, 278. Okay, this doesn't make a difference at this stage, but it's 278 watts. We are getting already, and here's the um, situation again. So this is pretty much the same. This is the same piece of timber I'm using down there on the solar farm as well. So they are on the same angle, and the sun is pretty much coming now, like 20 degrees or so. Here's the app. So we are currently having 37 degrees. Let's see, if we go the steepest we can do, that would be 100. like this. That makes it 40 degrees. 280 watts. So there's almost no difference between a shallow angle and a steep angle at this point of time. So I guess we just leave it in this upright position because I think we have to go a little bit steeper actually with the sun. The sun is just around there. Yeah. We also have to get the solar panel alignment tool up on the roof here and test it correctly. I actually calibrated one last night. So thanks for your donations. <laughs> yeah, I read, I read the comments from the last video this morning and um, well, thank you very much for that. There are quite a few people actually objecting the idea with the actuators here because we are adding a lot of complexity to the whole system, which I 100% agree. You've got not only the mechanical part, but also the electrical part. We need to run a 12 volt cable from all the panels then separately down to the switchboard there and have a power supply mounting the light sensors, the wind sensors and everything. And this all needs to be connected to a controller then. It is, it is quite a lot, but until now, it is only an idea and and covering the solar panel around so there's no wind going actually underneath there's no waf for that hmm? this is this is the wife acceptance factor and it totally looks ugly it is it is terrible you've got these triangle boxes on the house then here <laughs> no 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 definitely not Someone left actually a comment and said, well, you can put as many panels on your roof as you want connecting to this inverter. The inverter will automatically limit the power output to this two kilowatt. I don't think this is the case, actually. If I would parallel two of these panels here to one input of the controller, it will then look for the maximum power point of these two panels. And then the input current would be twice as high as the maximum allowed current for this controller. It will just burn out. There is always a specification, there's always a maximum input current for all solar charge controllers. You can exceed them in a certain way if the inverter can do over paneling. But usually you have these restrictions in your MPPT controller. The electronic is not made for carrying twice the current for a long time. So unfortunately, I cannot just put these panels here flat on the roof somewhere and then have two of them in parallel and connect them to one input of the controller. It, it will just burn out. 
And then you can see the micro inverter system, 266 watts it produces and charging my battery already. This is mostly this one panel here because the other ones are still in shading there. So we have uh, 317 watts now coming from the um, solar farm. Including this one panel on the roof, which probably makes most of the power, if not all. <laughs> Okay, let's have a breakfast and then we have another look in an hour or so. Well, I haven't, I haven't had any breakfast yet. I need to go on the roof and prepare this all. I was already late. That's what you do. <laughs> it is now 10.30, one hour later. I had my breakfast, thanks. I want to have a look how much power we are generating now. So I've disconnected the micro inverter. And we plug in the tester. 350. So this is pretty much the same power output as we had before when it was still mounted to the tilt system. This is now a steeper angle. You can see from the shading here how the angle to the sun is still. So we just have to wait until the sun comes over now and gives us a better angle and then we should see more output as well. So I'm expecting we see the same output as with the other panels there on the solar farm because this is now exactly the same angle as we have here. It's the same piece of timber. And I'm just looking at the heights here of our tilt system and of the panel as it is mounted right now. This actually will give us a larger shadow because it is just higher. When the sun is further down in the afternoon then, in this area there, we will get actually a larger shadow with this installation than we had with the tilt system. So I just, I hope you can still see it. I'm going to change the angle of the solar panel right now. So I'm taking this timber away. 344. Okay, I'm lowering it even more. 333. Okay, I've got it now sitting flat on the roof. We're getting uh, 300 watts. <clears throat> yeah, 300 watts in a flat position. And now it's, now it's back up with the timber. And we are getting 360. So this is already 20% more output from a flat position to this upright position here. But of course, this creates all kind of trouble now. So starting from the shading to other panels further down the track, as well as the mechanics we have to install and manage in this position for 20% more output. All right, let's give it another one, one and a half hours until the sun is there somewhere at around noon time. And then we do some more testing with a tilt and see how much power we actually get and what the difference is. Full sunshine at the solar farm. We've got the 1230. Well, let's have a look. So we are almost, almost at the perfect angle. There is a bit of haze clouding coming up, slight clouds. So I hope we can still um, manage here today with our test. So you can see the uh, the shadow is actually not far off from the optimal angle. Damn it, I have forgotten the spat. All right, let's um, see what we have. Hiya. See, I'm not so worried about the horizontal shading we get with a can here because we cannot change the because we cannot change the horizontal angle. The tilt could be actually a bit more than this, but honestly, I don't think it makes a big difference. Okay, let's measure. Let's plug in our device now. Unplug the. Okay, testing. We are testing 421 watts here. So this is the same output as all the other solar panels have in the solar farm. Let me drop the panel all the way. So this would be 
this would be simulating a flat roof mount now and the power output goes down to 288 watts yeah 288 watts so that that is not good that is not good so lying them flat on the roof here is basically not an option but of course it fixes my shading problem And now we are back to 418 watts. I cannot believe it gets windy now within one minute. And I still got this um, panel sitting there on the roof on this steep angle. No string attached, nothing secured. Just a piece of timber on the back. I should check it out. It's probably not enough to lift up this panel. It's still pretty heavy even on this angle position but um, better safe than sorry. Oh, our calibration tool. Okay, so this string will only prevent it from flipping over to the other side. It, it should be fine though. So we have got now um, 130 or so and you can see the shading is slowly moving in so the sun is already going down we are over over the peak yeah we are still not in the right angle it should be it needs to be still steeper that is crazy yeah there you can see it the shadow is just coming and touching the panel in the bottom right hand corner yeah we are getting 370 watts from the panel on the roof and the other ones are 390 350 360 as well only I think there are some branches waving over these panels from time to time and this lowers the uh, actual and also these little clouds they are building a little bit of a filter in front of the sun so we have less power output anyway it's close to 4 p.m in the afternoon now solar farm in full shading but here our solar panel is still in the full sun let's see I mean, ridiculous long shadow at this point of time. This is more than three and a half meters. Let's see what we get. Let this one in. 258 watts. It's not too bad, right? This times four gives you one kilowatt in the late afternoon, but there's no space so there would be not enough roof space for four panels in these conditions then. Wow, look at this long shadow. So it must be really, really steep now. Let's see if this makes a difference. So that would be like... It would be like... Like this. <laughs> That's almost vertical. And what did we get? 300 296 watts wow but this is <laughs> it would be ridiculous i mean the shading goes until the end of the roof then that is crazy okay and the other extreme to lie it flat will give us 55 <laughs> So that's not that's not a good option. I mean, it is close to four o'clock now in the afternoon. Lift it up again. So none of these solutions is actually perfect or even close to perfect. Mounting them flat on the roof is the safest option, but the least efficient option. Having them on a tilt like this is the best solution, but the least safe solution. And, and the ground mount, as you have suggested, is not going to happen because this is shaded all the time in winter time. I've got two hours of full sun in this area there. While up here I've got maybe like seven hours of sun. <sighs> okay, let's wait for the sun to go down and then we have a look what we actually got today. Far more difficult than I thought. 
All right, guys, the sun has set for quite a while and we are back here in the off-grid garage and having a look at the Solar Man Smart App. Unfortunately, I cannot see any benefits of today's test. So having the solar panel on a steeper tilt did not generate more energy than in comparison to the more shallow tilt we had the panel before that. So we can see here the overall production of all four panels. This was the first day when this panel was on the roof on the more shallow tilt. But here it was pure sunshine while today we had some clouds in the afternoon and it made actually a difference in production. This is now the view for panel number two only. This is the one on the roof. And here again, these larger columns. This is when we mounted the panel on the roof. There was the first day with full sun. 1.9 kilowatt hours, while yesterday with some clouds during the day and today with some clouds in the afternoon, we made only 1.7 kilowatt hours. So there was no, so there was no increased production, unfortunately. So we have to wait for another sunny day to see the actual production increase with a steeper angle now in comparison to these two bars here with um, the more shallow angle then. How much do we gain with a steeper angle? And also thank you very much to everyone who has sent me an email already today. In the last video, I was asking for your ideas how to proceed with the idea of a linear actuator actually pushing up these panels to a certain angle. And then in case of a storm or high wind, I can lay them flat back again on the house roof. So there's no damage, no force, no wind load on the actual roof. Because this is a bit of my concern, I'm not sure how strong this roof is and I don't know how good this roof is actually connected to the house, how safe this all is. And also thank you very much for all your great comments under this last video as well. One or two people have actually suggested to build a frame where the panel sits on and then use the linear actuator to move this frame up and down. Because now with the timber under the panel, right in the middle, the corners of the panel are so wobbly and the whole panel is flexing in itself. It's twisting basically. And over time, I'm sure this will cause some micro cracks or something in the actual solar cells. So this whole mechanic is not right. So I will actually need a frame under these panels if I want to lift them automatically up and down. Well, I have enough aluminum profiles here to build such a frame. So I'll go and think about it and see what I can do. I have an absolute access of these solar rails and I'm sure we can build something out of that. All right, guys, so far this um, rather unsuccessful day today. I was hoping for a bit more result, but unfortunately due to the weather, we didn't see any increase in power generation. Even the panel was on a steeper angle, better to the sun. Okay, guys, as always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support. Thanks for all your help, all your emails with your great ideas how to build such an automatic tilt frame system. And also thank you very much for your generous donations to buy me a beer. Well, I really needed some of them. <laughs> as I said, back on the roof, it is far more complicated than I actually thought it will be. But I'm sure eventually we will get there and we will find a good and perfect solution and until the next video, guys, when we do something a bit different, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>